on a preaching series and I want to bring you back to where we were. And so I want to give you a few points to kind of get your mind back in that, in that frame of, of thinking uh, for the teaching series that we are on because we are on the road to dominion. Say the road to dominion. That's actually what I've entitled the series that we're on. You know, I don't entitle messages per se, but I do have direction for series. Um, um, entitling messages, and that's cool, that's good to focus your notes and everything like that, but we're on assignment, we're on a journey. Glory to God. Um, um, Kino and uh, Lashanda, don't get weary and well-doing. I rebuke the spirit of depression, panic, and concern. I command rest over you. Do not leave. You worked, this sounds crazy, almost oxymoronic. You worked hard to get into the place of rest. Don't let the enemy pull you out of that place of rest. Your provision is in your rest. Your increase is in your rest. And so I curse every plan of the enemy to disturb rest. The word of God says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abundant. Always abundant. And I declare always abundance over you all. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. All right. So we are talking about living and functioning in dominion. Um, and I want to just get your mind there with a few points. Uh, we did establish this foundation that the children, I feel God today. Glory to God. I feel his presence. Um, go ahead and get healed then. Be healed. Don't leave your sick. Be healed. My, my hand is on fire. Glory to God. Be here. Don't you dare leave this house sick today. Uh, I pray healing over that urinary infection. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Whew, all right. Um, the journey from the children of Israel, they started off in Egypt, then they went to the wilderness, then they went to the dominion. Uh, we've been focusing now on this phase in the wilderness because it's in the wilderness that you learn how to surrender to the presence of God. It's all about learning to walk with God. That's what the old wilderness experience was, walking with God. Because there was this perpetual cloud that was over them the entire 40 years in the wilderness, teaching them to walk with God. The journey, watch this, uh, from the wilderness, sorry, from slavery to the wilderness to um, dominion. And the, the, the thing that we've been warring against, warring, W-A-R-R-I-N-G, is the fact that the persons tend to die without ever getting to dominion. Because wilderness means freedom, so you're so glad you're free that you spend the rest of your life free, not accomplishing anything. Um, just to understand this, nobody who is released from the Fox Hill prison sits out on the wall and just chill. Nobody gets free for the sake of being free. Because when you're in bondage, you plan what you want to do when you get free. Unfortunately, that, that, that thinking does not apply to those of us in the kingdom. We get free and then we just live free. But never accomplish what God has set us up to do. So I have some, some things just to remind you what we said last time, then we can go further. Uh, point number one, your response to the presence positions you for dominion. How you respond to the presence positions you for dominion. Uh, people that want to live in dominion got to get comfortable being in God's presence. At some point... Worship got to stop annoying you. At some point, if you want to get a dominion, you got to get used to the place of, because see, worship and presence are synonymous. They go hand in hand. Not synonymous, but they go hand in hand, sorry. That you, you, you don't have one without the other. And so if your goal is to get a dominion, you got to get comfortable in worship. This church is life worship center, and we make no apologies. We believe that we are a church that's being called to prepare people for dominion. We've been called to prepare you for dominion, and a necessary ingredient, a necessary component on the journey to dominion is worship, is the presence of God. If you don't know the presence of God, you will, short, you will sabotage your own ultimate destiny of dominion. Say amen to that. So you've got to learn worship. 
It doesn't work outside of worship. Worship must be a comfortable place. Now, worship is relative to the individual. How I worship ain't how you worship and ain't how they worship. Some loud like Rita, some quiet like Jody, some in between like Sapphire. Just move around. Glory to God. But whatever, what, what, <laughs> we got them all here. We got them all. You got Jody, you got Rita, you got, you got Shay. They got, they all different. Shay just, just start moving. Just start moving. You don't hear her much, but she be doing, she be coming forward in the Holy Ghost. Uh, whatever your lane is for worship, you got to find that. But, but worship, there must be some worship response. And your worth for someone has no time limit when you really value who they are. All right, number two, dominion. We said this last week. This is, this is a declaration. Dominion will be the longest phase of my life. Say that. Okay, let me, let me kind of make sure you remember what that means. Uh, they spent a long time in Egypt a long time in the wilderness, and many didn't make it to dominion. What we are saying is, yes, we were in slavery, that's sin. Yes, we're in freedom, we got delivered. But we're declaring the lion's share of our life will be spent in dominion. All right, this, this, this is a hard crowd. This, this, is a hard, this is a hard crowd. All right, we can keep on. That's all right. That's all right. Somebody will catch it. Uh, thank you so much. Number, next, number three. There is no scenario where we do not pass through the wilderness. I'm just making some points and you can write this down so you can kind of get your bearings back as we go further in the teaching. There's no scenario where you skip the wilderness. You don't get a get out of the wilderness free card. You've got to go through it. Number four. There is no kingdom benefit for being obedient without Willingness. Spent a long time on that two weeks ago. I don't know why I should do it again now. Just to remind you what the Bible says, that they that are willing and obedient shall eat the good of the land. If you are obedient without being willing, you rob yourself of eating the good of the land. So in other words, if you're doing it with a bad attitude, you might as well don't do it. If you're doing it with the wrong spirit, you might as well don't do it. And I remember, I, I don't want to call their name again because I called their name last time. So I won't call their name again. The ushers. And then I called the intercessors. And then I called the praise team. All the people who serve in church, who work in ministry. That if you're doing it because it's duty, if you just, I'm doing this because I'm duty bound to do this. And there's no willingness along with that. The Bible says that you will not get the good of the land. There is no kingdom benefit for obedience without willingness. Put a text up there, Isaiah 19 and 20. Isaiah, Isaiah 1, sorry. Isaiah 1. Um, let, me, let me read it in the Message Bible. Isaiah 1, 19. Oh, you got it there. Here's what it says. If you'll willingly obey, you'll feast like kings. But if you're willful and stubborn, you will die like dogs. That's right. God says so. Now that's some strong stuff right there. If you're willfully obedient, you'll feast like kings. But if you're stubborn, doing stuff with bad attitude, nasty ways, they better thank God I'm doing this. They better thank God. You know, I could have been somewhere else. Please go be somewhere else. I could have been home right now. Go home. Hey, they lucky I get this money. Keep your money. High tithe in the church, you know. Keep your tithe. No, I'm serious. Keep it. Keep your tithe, your offering, your pastoral seed. Keep not whatever. Keep the tip. Keep everything. Because it ain't helping you know how. Glory to God. Uh, God has gone before you preparing the way for you. That's the next point. God has gone before you preparing the way for you. You never reach anywhere first. 
God, that's some good stuff right there, boy. I try, I try to hold my mule because I feel like hollering. You never reach nowhere for yourself. Wherever you go, you meet God there. God Almighty. The next one. Oh, God. This one, me and reading them. Your sin doesn't chase the presence of God away. Church folk, don't write that one down, boy. Uh-uh. Bishop, you're off one. You're off on that one. Your sin doesn't chase the presence of God away. If it did, David was in trouble. Hold on. If it did, the earth would have never been created. Why? Because the Bible says that the darkness is over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered. Oh, God. Say it again. That in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 1, the beginning of the book, it says that there was darkness everywhere and chaos everywhere, but yet still the Spirit of God was hovering. Darkness don't chase the presence of God. Your sin don't chase the presence of God. I, I could give you plenty more Bible, but shoot, I could just give you my life. Because there's been some times in my life when God shouldn't have rest his hand on me. But he did. Lord, you're only in the room. There have been some times where I was not qualified to be used of God. But in the midst of that moment, not only did God use me, God healed through me, God prophesied through me, God preached through me. Come on here. Is there anybody else in this room that know you are not qualified? You shouldn't have been used. But in that same condition, not after you cleaned yourself up, Watch it. The Bible says, the, the, calm down, Denzel. the story of the prodigal son says, the boy came out the pig pen. Pig slop. It was so crazy, the Bible says, that he wanted to eat what the pigs were eating and they didn't eat him. He gets to his father's house and the father didn't say, hose him down. Preach again, Denzel. The father didn't say, Hose him down, get some hospital soap. That life boy. You know that one that lasts for three days. When you say, you st I think it's still on your hand. You still, you're like, get God on my, you can't get rid of that. The father says, don't take his dirty clothes off. Put the clean clothes on the dirty clothes. Good God Almighty. And there's some church folk make you believe you got to wash and, and soak and cleanse and then dry out and then wash and cleanse and dry out. God says, bring your dirty self. I'll drop a robe on you with the date on you. God, God Almighty. I'm a Pentecostal preacher. I ain't grow up like that. It's down where they teach us. Oh, you got to take long. You got to clean. Wash. Come, let me see. Let me, let me see you. Let me see you. All right, go back again. That's religion. That's Old Testament. Where the priest got to declare you clean. I don't need no priest to declare me clean. I know that I'm under the love of God and I am the righteousness of God. Not because I did right, because he did right. I receive his righteousness, not my own righteousness. Because my righteousness is like filthy rise. Glory to God. But because he loved me. Glory to God. All right, leave that. Woo, glory. Y'all still here? I'm just reminding y'all what we say already. I ain't started preaching yet. So here we go. I'm just trying to just, trying to just kind of get y'all in the right frame of mind. Glory to God. Someone shout, I am qualified. I am qualified. God ain't, a, God ain't afraid of nasty. You better thank God for that. God ain't afraid of no good. Good God Almighty. Isn't it crazy that Jesus at the Last Supper and said, one of y'all can betray me, and all of them say, is it me? I mean, all of them. All of them said, is it me? And God still, Jesus still had them up on him. Jesus sweating blood. Peter and them boys sleeping. And he didn't get rid of them. And yet, all this stuff in scripture showing how amazing the love of God is, we were still being told by church, you too dirty. You mess up too bad. 
I grew up in a church culture. No, I'm hiding out here now. I grew up in a church culture. When you do certain things, they make you sit in back of church. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. That's the culture I grew up in. And what they said is, we can sit you in back of church because we get cash. Because I don't want you to tell the people in them chair with the handle and get cash. I mean, and do it. You know the ones who get the chairs with the handles. The, 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 chairs, the, the chairs with the armrests, yeah. I don't want you to think for one second they ain't do it. They just ain't get catch. And so what we do is we punishing you for not being smart. Preach, Rev. You are being punished because you should have been smarter than that. Talk to us afterwards. We can tell you how to be smart. Should have known better than getting to Atlantis. So there's people there. Some of y'all don't look at me. Y'all looking around this. Like. You should have known better. How how, how you going go to Smith's? You know we drive past that. I need so, someone that bowls it. I ain't care. God still love me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I ain't care. God still love me. Uh, you think I can waste the court time preaching all this on sin? I can preach the love of God. Because the more you hear sin, the more you sin. Because the conversation of sin creates a sin consciousness. Have you not learned this yet? The more you tell your child don't eat it, the more they eat it. Because you create a, conscious, a consciousness, you create the image of it in their mind. The Bible says that God draws to repentance not by telling us of our wrong. Uh, Romans chapter 2 verse number 4. He draws us to repentance by good works. He loves us to change. But the church fares us into changing. They get us scared to change. Glory to God. You could come to the altar because you're afraid of going to hell, but you ain't gonna stay safe because you're scared to go to hell. That can get people to the altar, but it ain't get them to live right. Say it slow, Denton. Telling them but hell will get them to the altar. But the fear of hell, Mother Lillian, will not make you live right. It don't last. Some of you like really pondering that, I ain't, I ain't sure, Bishop. All right. Just check your life out. Did it work for you? Love has a stronger conviction than fear. Then so leave it alone, leave it alone. This feels real good. You ever get a love conviction? I love getting you because you know, God, God never been in love. You get love good. You get, I mean, I get so. All right, all right, let's go. Let's, come on, let's, all right. So, <laughs> y'all play. How has he never been in love? Oh, Lord Jesus. All right, let's go to, let's go to today's word. All that was introduction. Some of y'all mind just going. Y'all, y'all, y'all way back in the 90s now. Y'all gone. Y'all gone, 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 gone. All right. Hey, come on. So here we go. We are after a people that, Labosha Mahandala, thank you, Father, that surrender to God's presence because they understand that's the only way to get to the place called dominion. Now, in getting ready for this morning, the Lord says, leave presence this morning. And I'm saying, God, I really want to jump deep into presence. He said, leave that and do what I just do. I said, okay, God, what does you do? He says, watch me. I don't tell my people too much about the journey. 
what I tell them about is the destination. I tell them where I'm taking them. He says, because when I tell them too much about the journey, they can change their mind and don't go. So he says, son, watch how I is operate. I tell Abraham, go to a land that I will show you. I can tell Abraham there's a king that can try to take your wife and kill you. Preach that. Because if I tell Abraham that, Abraham said, you know what? I ain't full of this. I can stay in Ur or the Chaldees. Uh, uh, I can give Joseph a dream with, with his brothers bowing down and his mommy and daddy bowing down. I can give him that and he can get excited. I will not show him Potiphar. I will not show him the pit. And I definitely ain't shown him the prison. Because if I show that to him, he can call that dream a nightmare. And say, God, God Almighty, come on, dance. let's walk this. I, I, I can just let Samuel pour the oil on David and say, boy, you're going to be king. I can tell him that Saul can throw javelins at him. Because if I tell him that, he ain't going to take the crown. I can tell Mary, blessed art thou about woman. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. I can tell you that Herod can try to kill you, your, your little boyfriend, and the little baby you carry. A little boyfriend. I can tell, because if I tell her all that, she can say, not me. Oh, God Almighty. Uh, that there are, listen, man, there are some of you that God has given you a glimpse of where you're going, but you've been forgetting the glimpse. You got to remind yourself of where God says you're going. That's why he shows you where you're going, so that when you're going through the journey, you don't stress. Watch this. Whatever God doesn't show you, can't kill you. I just said something just now that of course, 60 all together. Glory to God. Whatever... Whatever God does not show you does not have the power to kill you. One more time, say it again. Whatever God shows you, doesn't show you, does not have the power. It's not authorized to kill you. So if God didn't show you this part of your journey, don't sweat it, just go through it. If God didn't show you you losing your job, he showed you opening your own business. Why are you stressing because you lose your job? Just go to where God showed you. Whatever this little bump in the road that you're experiencing right now that God did not show you, if he didn't show it to you, that means it can't stop you, girlfriend. It can't stop you, soldier. It cannot stop you because he didn't show it to you. Can you shout over what God showed you? Can you just give him glory because of what he showed you? And I believe there are 14 of y'all that what you're in now, can you be honest, what you're in now, God didn't show you. Can you? Is there anybody here that where you are right now, God didn't show it to you? Now, can you please shout because he didn't show it to you? Because if he did not yeah. When Robin and I... When Robin and I stood before that, that, that altar, Bishop Wallace, and he said, I pray plenty cheering over y'all. So Bishop Wallace said, I pray, I pray plenty cheering over y'all. And your children gonna be blessed. And he prayed the prayer over us, and we were excited. He never showed us the baby dying. Preach then, sir. That ain't what he said. But if you forget what he said, you could get stuck when the baby died. Can we talk real for a second? And, and it's so easy that you could just see that baby dying and say, oh, God, it's finished. It's done. But then God says, did I show it to you? If I didn't show it to you, it can't stop you. If I didn't show it to you, that means it's just something, something transient that you got to go through. My God, them broke days that he didn't show you, just go through them. Glory to God. My God, them, them, them tuna for breakfast, then tuna again for lunch, 
and then tuna for dinner days that God didn't show you. Just go through them. I know he showed you the lobster days. Glory to God. But while you're in this tuna phase, eat your tuna, boo-boo. Because this ain't going to last too much longer. Eat your tuna and celebrate because you're going through this season. And there's another place. God Almighty, he, he showed you you married with a family. Hallelujah. And now you're 32 and you're panicking. Now you're 34 and you're panicking. Now you're 37 and you're panicking. If he didn't show you this phase, don't stress about this phase. Hold on to what he showed you, my God. And Abraham not being weak in faith, staggered not at the promises of God, but remained strong in faith, knowing that he that had promised was faithful to bring it to pass. You gotta be faithful to the fact and be convinced that if he promised it, he gonna do it, and if he didn't show it to me, I don't need to stress. He showed me home ownership. He didn't show me the bank calling me. He didn't show me that. Because if he had shown me that, I would have never built a duplex. I would have just go pay rent. Come on here, man. Y'all ain't walking. Barry, I wouldn't have fooled with that. If I know I was going to get shame that now, that now Mopi, my little secretary, know the bank call. I said, thank God I trust Mopi because Mopi never tell none of y'all She got a couple of them calls. And she's coming there dead smooth. She's coming to the office. She said, she put in the desk. She said, Obviously, call you. And she's working. It will be being true, boy. He called back. God didn't, God didn't show me that. But I didn't have this word back then. So I sit in my office and cry. I sit in my office and cry. I can tell you all that. It's closed the door. Then Moby leave we laugh and Moby girl, she go and then when she closes the door, I cry. Because what are you doing here? Preacher. Anointed. People getting healed, people getting delivered. And I can't answer thing for God. Because I told myself, give him something at the end of this month. For the third month. And the something ain't reached yet. Because when your bill is seven and eight and nine thousand dollars, you know. $50 don't really move them. Because she asked me, she said, what you can do? She, you asked me, what can you do? I said, hold on. How 50 sound? Jesus. And now to be the place where they don't call me. Guess, guess why they don't call me? Not because I just pay on time. I ain't got none. Oh, y'all in. Oh, oh. They get on the call me four. Yeah, then they call for night. You want something? No. I want nothing. They like calling Christmas time. If I want something. Tell them. Go play with two madre. Espanol. <laughs> Glory to God. See, so you got to know this. <laughs> God. All right. So, so anyway, that was really just to make a point that let's talk destination. Destination for us is dominion. And whenever your wilderness gets long, remember, I got dominion that I'm going to. Now, 
let's talk about dominion for a second, then we're going. Dominion is not a new age concept that Pastor Denzel conjured up or the new age preachers introduced. Dominion was first introduced in Genesis chapter 1. So we got to understand that the idea of not living, oh my God, not living in, in dominion is disobedience. If you are not in charge, you are walking in disobedience. Well, Lord God. If you are at the bottom of the system, you are living in disobedience. Now, I said this in all, no, we preached plenty this week. This is a hard week this week. I, I said this in one of them preaching assignments this week. That if we don't hear this, then we won't believe for this. So the reason that this sounds like a shocker is because preachers ain't preaching this as though they're saying in the Bible. From day one, he says the believer is supposed to dominate the earth. From day one. Somewhere along the line, we dropped this message. And we have developed a, a, a body of... Okay, don't say done, bro. Don't say midget. Don't say carnal. Don't say limited. Don't say upset and frustrated and depressed and mediocre, and unhappy. Don't say those words. But you can pick any one of them. That's who we've developed in church. Because we have set the bar so low. We have set the standard so low, and the standard that we have set is unscriptural. Are you still here? So watch this. Go to Genesis chapter 1 for me, please. Let's go to the Bible. Genesis 1 Watch this. Let's read this in the, in the CEV, verse 27, if you have that. Um, let me read it um, um, until you get it there. So God created humans to be like himself. Well, mother, that's point number one. He created humans to be like himself. He made men and women. He, God gave them his blessing and said, no, that sounds like that other teacher. God gave them his blessing. Someone shout, the blessing is on me. So he gave them his blessing and said, <laughs> have a lot of children. All right. Then he says, fill the earth with people. And this would get me right here. And do what? Fill the earth with people and do what? How are we doing with that, with that instruction? The devil is controlling every system in the earth. And we're still preaching a message that don't even address this. As though God didn't give this instruction. This is a divine instruction. Let me show you something else. We'll talk about this dominion thing. Watch this. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Watch this. This is God talking to Abram now. He says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. That's in NLT. That's the New Living Translation. Let me read it again. New Living Translation. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. Just go ahead and touch your neighbor lightly and ask them, who know you? See, now, for somebody, they can be insulted by this, but I need to stretch your expectation. I got to stretch you because the book says, I will make you famous. Well, see, Pastor, you can say that. They see you was preaching. You, I can't sing like you. This way, behaving. I can't sing. See, you can sing. People know you because you can sing. People know. No, the book says your gift will make room for you. And everyone in this room got a gift that can make you famous. I was talking to this boy this week. You all know him. I talked to him this week. And I remember he came. I remember when I met him the first time years ago. He was just I. Now he's a household name. If I call his name, everybody here know him. His name is Solo. Y'all know Solo. Those who say you don't know him, you, you know him. You just don't know you know him. And that boy got songs all over the country, but everything, he just writes songs but prophet. <laughs> see, Karen, you see, you didn't know him. Eh? I, I, Karen said, I know him. Yeah, you know him straight. I tell you, you know him. Now she's laughing. <laughs> Solo has taken his gift and is known in every corner of this nation. 
and is famous. That's what the blessing does do. And every one of you have a gift, glory to God. Whether it's cookie, whether it's guava dove, glory to God. Whether it's whatever the thing is that God has given you something that is, that is designed to make you famous, but the church ain't telling you that. And so the people who are telling you that don't have the Holy Ghost. So you don't realize that it's the anointing that hits that gift that causes it to blow up. And so we got to now wake you up to the fact that if you are not famous, you're not living in the blessing. Now, ain't that strong? Some of you work on a job with, I mean, could you imagine you have 20 people employed in your business. You've been there for 10 years. The receptionist's been there for seven years. I go to the counter and says, hi, can I see Rita? Rita. Let, let me look in the directory. I ain't know nobody in there. You mean you've been you been there you been there you been there all them years, only twenty employees and nobody even know you on the job. That is disobedience. That is anti-word. Hold on, but it comes to life with the center. Oh, we know we didn't hear. Shela bahande le bahu. Preach right? No, no. People knowing you in church is nothing. We've been trying to be famous at church. Who cares if you're famous at church? When you grow up in church, like me and Yasmin and Marisha and Robin, them, they notice that everybody is singing good in church. We grew up in church singing. I remember my first song, my first song I sang in church, Cause I rise again. Ain't no power that can keep me down. Sing, boy! Cause I rise. And the church going crazy. Cause that's church. People, people stick money on me. Y'all ain't over them days. Y'all ain't over that. When they come, they get the money, stick it up on your clothes, buy money, all of all of buy money. And I was young, I thought the money was mine. I said, no, come boy. <laughs> you know, you, I thought it was my money. I said, no, come, 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 come. They didn't put it off with No, that yours, boo boo. That, that's for the church. No, everybody sing good in church. So all y'all who's good church singers, you can't sing. You just sing church. You don't mind that. That was strong? Who know you? No, and I got to say this because we got to see this, Michelle, as kingdom. You mean the folks on your job don't know you? There are 11 houses through your corner. I try to find your house. Hey, you know where Simone lives? Simone? Y'all ain't game with me. Y'all ain't going with me. Hold on, man. You've been living there for 15 years. All your children born there. And ain't nobody know you through the corner. And you kingdom? And you remember, you walking in the minute, you walking in the minute, and everybody know you. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. This is Matthew telling you this, that, that when they had new recruits, they would send their people in the communities to ask them, do you know this person? And I had a lot of them people come to me. You know, it's so often one, but no, what's that story? <laughs> you may watch the stream. No, I can say this. Merv, fell from the grove. Delivery down this series lane, they came there. So there's a young man named Merv. You know, you know, you know him well in the community. And I, I know from the community, I know from church. He's good in the grove, so I, you know, I fix him up. But, but the truth of the matter is, a lot of us, we are having absolutely no impact. And the book says that the blessing makes you famous. Now watch this. We told you this. You don't get what the word says. See, y'all hear me saying this a lot and y'all get familiar. Don't get familiar with, the, with these teachings now. Don't ever get familiar with what the Lord has us to release in this house because then you're going to miss what God is saying to you. You don't get what the word says. Now, the word, the word says, he says, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. You don't get that like that. You do not get what the Bible says. You get what you believe. 
So if you don't believe this, if you don't apply faith to this, you will never see this happen in your life. Because this is not automatic. Now you said, but pastor, I don't even believe that for me because that's Genesis and that's Abram. Thank you so much for saying that. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says this in the Amplified. Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. To the end that through their receiving Christ Jesus, the blessing promised to Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles. So through Christ, what was promised to Abram in Genesis 12 is supposed to come to us. But if you don't believe that, then you will never see that. You should be known. I should be able to go to the, to the counter. What should we call my boy out? Go to the, go to the receptionist and ministry of works and say, hey, where can? And then you just go in the back. And hopefully, new will come out. <laughs> hopefully. We suppo we supposed to be known as <clears throat> go to the next point then so they, they can tie to you. <sighs> I want to show you this whole thing about oh God, it's 1045. This dominion mandate is so critical. Watch this. I gave you I gave you Genesis 1, gave you Genesis 12, Galatians. Watch this in Matthew 5, the scripture that we know so well. And then I get into our closer scripture and we out of here. Um, Matthew 5, the book says this. You are the salt of the earth. Meat don't change salt. Salt changes meat. So if you go back to what we read in Genesis 1 about, he says that you bring the earth under your control. That's what salt does. Salt brings food under its control. Food don't control salt. And as Big as that meat is, them couple crystals of salt tells that meat what to do. Good God Almighty. And so I don't care how big the corporation that you're in. Can I preach on Denzel? I, you know, Saturday night, you know, you get in your mind, right? Getting ready for preaching the word and, and just, you know, minister to the people, getting yourself sanctified and purified. You know, but then you're also married. You have a wife who's making you do things. So my wife says to me last night, she says to me, she, um, she's in the rose before you go to bed. I wanted to answer in tongues. But you know, but wisdom says, shut up and season the meat before you get drunk. So, you know, but it was, I, and I literally saw this because I was, I was in my notes and just meditating on the word for this morning. And I got one big rose, big Big, roast big, no, okay, ain't that big, but, <laughs> but this, <laughs> but this, this, I mean, it's big, man, it's, it's, it's a big, man, I got this roast, right, and I season this roast, and, and, and I'm literally, I know this so, this so, so simple, so dumb, right, but I'm saying, like, just a little bit of salt, Trans transforming, this big piece of roast, Watch it. The Bible talks about light and says, so we are the salt of the earth, and then we are the light. We're the salt of the world and the salt of the earth, light of the world. I ain't got time to work that because Jesus separates earth from world. Salt, earth, light, world. Earth speaks to people and inhabitants. World speaks to systems. We light up the systems. We infect the people. So we salt of the earth, and then we're light of the world. We get into the world system and we shine the light in there. But Jesus says further, we shine the light, team. We shine the light in the systems where there's darkness, Brother Oliver. We shine the light. We, we penetrate systems. Now, we don't pound the people. You don't, people don't need light. People need salt. Systems need light. We have done wrong where we've because see, the, pro the problem with light is light doesn't have a conversation with darkness. Light has no compromise when it comes to darkness. Light slaps darkness and says, get out of here. And the church has been so busy being light, we forgot we're supposed to be salt. People need us to season them. You got to work them. You, you, with people, sometimes you got to let them be there. I really want us to understand this whole thing, but y'all getting this dominion thing though? That 
the world bends to us. We don't bend to the world. And then, Lord, i sorry, but I can give it a second service. The Mark 16, because I, I've been preaching Mark 16. We did this for a whole, our whole revolution when it came to healings, miracles, signs, and wonders was based on Mark 16. The same scripture. I've been preaching this so much times in so many places, and I couldn't realize, I didn't realize how much I missed in this text. Um, that this text in Mark 16 is a text he has been about dominion. And I missed it all along. I wish I had time to give you all that I wanted to give you. Because the first thing the text says, and these signs shall follow them. The true weight of someone living in dominion is not seen by what they meet in place, but it's seen by what they leave in place. So the first thing about a person of dominion is they always leave something behind. People walking in dominion don't take, take, take. They leave, leave, leave. That's the first thing we know about someone walking in dominion. That you always know they, are, they were there, not because things missing, but because more is there than they met there. I can say it. I don't care who get offended. This is so kind of you can laugh when I say this because this is a kind of service, but I can say it anyway. Totals don't know dominion. As common and as trivial as that sound, go think about the totals that you know. Think up. Oh, boy. Now, I know you want to laugh at clown, right? But think about everybody you know that always toting. Watch their life. People that live in dominion always leave and they ain't taking it. What did you leave when you left? You leave that job, they can't find the stapler, they can't find the paper, they can't find the pen, they can't find nothing. You carry everything in your bag. Jesus, Lord, you didn't, you didn't. And, you, and then you can come here shouting, but you walking in dominion? Stop lying. Is this too practical? No, folks that walk in dominion leave places better than they met it. These signs follow them. That belief. What's played out there? Let's go. What is following you? Hear this again, man. Living in dominion, the question must be asked, what am I leaving? What's following me? What did you leave at your last place of employment? What did you leave in that last community that you were in? What's following you? I want to really paint this picture of what it means to walk in dominion. Then we're coming back to presence and worship. I talked to my teachers here in the school, in, in this church, teachers that, that, that in this church. How are you changing the system? Because you can invite me in 20 years, 30 years, you can invite your pastor, pastor, to have in my retirement service. And I come in because I'm your pastor. And I can sit wherever they do the service. And my question can be, what's following you? What, what are you leaving in place? Oh my, you know what's turning? I mean, you have to touch a turn, you're a teacher. I mean, it's that a, that's not that deep. How have you infected the system? How have you changed how we do education? How have you changed how that school functions? Y'all here? As believers, we're supposed to leave a mark that can't be erased. That's when we're truly walking in dominion. Because what's around us shifts to us. Someone say, I received that. Father, I pray that these people now hear this word. And we raise the bar, raise the level of expectation. Place a greater demand on ourselves. To truly walk out this thing called dominion, to live this life as you call us to live it. I curse and cancel small thinking. 
I pray that no one in this room leaves here thinking, oh, that wasn't for me this morning. I pray that everyone here understands that you are speaking directly to them by the Spirit of God. Arise, O oh God, let your enemy be scattered. That purpose, desire, a drive for more would arise on the inside of us. And I declare we shall be a church of dominion. We shall be a people walking in dominion. But we don't bring people under our control, we bring systems under our control. We bring demons under our control. We bring curses under our control. Where there is darkness, we will bring the ones, we will be the ones to bring the light. So God, I give you praise, Father, for how our lives are being transformed by the word. And it is so now in Jesus' mighty name. Clap your hands and give God praise all in the room today. Come on, clap your, no, clap your hands and give God praise today.